Hello, I'm Rob, and this is another results tutorial. Friends, countrymen, rebel scum, welcome back. This time we will be doing a, uh, a little three-part series on the Rebel Pathfinders. This will allow me to uh, keep the videos a little bit shorter and focus more on specific models instead of all of them at one time. This first part will be focusing on what I'm calling the non-named characters. So here we go. As usual, after assembling our minis, we'll need to base coat them in something. And for that, I have used Steinorez Black through my airbrush. The primary figure here is the captain. And you might notice that he looks half painted already. That's because I jumped ahead. <laughs> You, uh, you'll notice this because I decided to do some color changes halfway through with his shirt and his vest and his pants. So I kind of move those uh, those important parts back to the front so you can show so you know we can just see what I've been doing. So I made this uh, same decision for the shirt, you know, uh, though ever so slightly earlier than I did for the pants. But um, for this, I chose to use some Vallejo Intermediate Blue. Uh, remember that the Rebels wear this uh, little half tactical vest. Um, I guess you could call it a flak jacket or something that only covers their front, front section. Um, so you can either try and avoid this or just go ahead and paint over it when it becomes time but just know that you know that the shirts are basically what you can see on her on the arms and the back of the figures and maybe a little bit on the sides and here we are with that little tactical vest and for that I decided I wanted to use some Vallejo flat brown uh, this will be the area directly under their chin. Uh, it goes all the way to the waistline and it starts uh, going around just a little bit to the side and it also encompasses the area right around the back of the head. So now that we have those little oopses out of the way, for the boots I've chosen to use some Vallejo Olive Drab. Uh, I kind of like this uh, darker tone for items like boots on models that will be on bases for a force setting. I think it kind of helps them blend in a little bit better than if they were wearing, you know, like say desert boots or just straight up black boots. And for the hat and the gloves, I use some Vallejo Deck Tan. Uh, since we are covering a black base, um, you know, if you hadn't already shaded this, the gloves and the hat and something else, this, this could take you a couple coats. So just remember, uh, take your time and allow the first coat to dry before you hit it again. And going from, you know, like I said, going from straight black to Deck Tan, it could probably take you three or four coats. So. And I should also mention that he's got this uh, this thing on his right hand. I, I guess you could call it like a little communication device or something like that. Uh, I didn't show that on screen, but I painted that red. Uh, you might notice it later on in the video where he's got this little red dot on his hand, and that's exactly what that is. The face will be getting a base coat of Vallejo Heavy Skin Tone. Uh, these paints are fairly thick. They tend to have a lot more pigment in them. So try and remember to thin, down, thin them down a little bit, you know, before using them. It'll help them flow better and it'll give you, honestly, it'll give you better coverage.
So here's all my uh, my four non-named characters together. You know, when I originally decided that my base coating was completed, uh, you'll notice that the captain guy, you know, his shirt and his flak or his tactical jacket are still the wrong colors. But I fixed that right after I got to this point. So. Back to the shirt with some Vallejo UK Prussian Blue. Uh, this paint, uh, I found that I tried thinning it down pretty good. You know, my original intention was to try and kind of glaze it over the original blue color, but that didn't quite work out. You know, sometimes uh, things in your mind just don't work out on the models. <laughs> uh, so, you know, with this, you want to cover most of the model, you know, as, as usual, you know, when you're building up colors, try and leave some of the previous colors showing, you know, in the deeper recesses and stuff like that. Hey, look at that. Those pants are finally the right color. So, moving on to the belts and the straps of the figures. Uh, for those, I... Uh, base them in a Vallejo German green. Uh, this is actually a great color to use uh, for basing on belts and straps. You know, for uh, the models that have those mesh belts, you know, when they're in forest settings and such. Getting after some of those pre shading highlights on the pants. Uh, for that, I'm using the original mixture of the German, the, uh, excuse me, the green brown, and we're adding in some Vallejo khaki. Uh, we only want to hit the tops of the folds, you know, any area, any hard edges, and leave the sides of the folds in the, pre you know, the, in the previous color, the undersides, you know, the bottom of the hiney, stuff like that, you know, just try and build up the upper edges some. Continuing the highlighting on the pants, and this time with straight khaki. Um, again, remember to uh, leave some of the previous colors showing. And we're trying to aim more just for the edges of all the, the pant folds and the legs and stuff like that. For an extreme highlight on those pants, uh, I added some Vallejo buff to my khaki, and this time I am doing my best just to hit the very edges of all the, the wrinkles and folds in his pants. Now highlighting the belts and the straps, 
Uh, take that original German green and add in a small drop of pale green. Uh, not too much here or the pale green will really overpower that German green. To highlight, either work the edges or the center of the belt. Working on that flak jacket, uh, we're going to add some game color leather brown to the flat brown that we used to paint that thing in. I'm not for sure if I told you how I painted that thing now that I think about it. Uh, so this, you know, obviously you no know, aim towards the outside edges or any upward, you know, top facing spots. Now using some straight leather brown, we're going to be doing some uh, more of a defined edge highlighting on the back part uh, where the jacket meets the shoulders, the front inside where the zipper would be, and of course everywhere where there would be a pocket. Using some beige red here, we're going to clean up his nose, the areas under his eyes, the bottom of his chin, and his cheekbone areas. Uh, remember, with this beige red, uh, we want to treat it just like we did the heavy skin tone. You're going to want to thin it down a little bit, you know, and uh, take your time. Don't be afraid to give this, uh, you know, these areas a couple coats to build them up. But definitely don't go in really heavy right off the bat because it'll just make him look really funny. For the boots, we do a mixture of olive drab and English uniform. For this, we're aiming for the tops of the uh, area where the toes would be, the edges towards the back of the boot, and the area around the heels. Using some Army Painter Flesh Tone, thinned down with a Flow Improver and a little bit of water, go ahead and shade everybody's faces and hands. We are now using some Army Painter Brown Tone, again thinned down with a Flow Improver and Water. And for that we're going to shade every part that is not a face. Uh, the reason for the Flow Improver is that it will help the wash naturally slide off surfaces and find those recesses easier. And that helps actually makes help cleaning up the models afterwards a lot easier. You know, just make sure, you know, you take your brush, get it get a little bit of water on it, touch it to a towel, go clean off the part of the mini where the 
where the wash is at, touch it to a towel again, and just go back and repeat the process. Uh, you just have to make sure that you really pay attention to your models as they dry because the wash will pull up in areas, so you'll need to make sure that you clean it up as it as, uh, goes along. So after that's all dry, you know, come back, clean up any areas where you feel like that need it, you know, using the previous mixtures we've talked about, and base your minis according to your army style. Here we are, folks, part one of Rebel Pathfinders for Star Wars Legion. Uh, I will have parts two and three up later this week or early next week as soon as I can get them done. Uh, the Pathfinders are pretty simple to paint. You know, there's nothing really big about them. The big thing is, you know, just try and give them a little bit of diversity between your models. You don't want them to look all identical and stuff. So down below, you'll find a list of paints and links. To purchase them, these links do not cost you any extra, but are a great way to help my channel. You will also find a PayPal tip jar link and a Patreon link where you can be involved in what I paint and possibly even win free stuff. As always, thanks for watching and remember to like, subscribe, and share to help my channel grow. See you next time.